Okay. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, we're back with Growlers with Wheelow, and today we are at the Park Ave Arrowhead, uh, Camp Arrowhead Mountain Bike Series. Um, this was number, it's the first one I've made this year. I think this, this was, was number the third. third. Yeah, because yeah. they canceled one yeah. and rescheduled it for next week. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. So we're here with Alexa Harding today. She's our Hi. special guest. Well, we just <laughs> raced. Before we start, we do have our growler. So today uh, we got no BS brewing from uh, Lakeville, Canisius Lake. And okay. they, Very excited to try this yeah. one. A little IPA today. I got an IPA just for Wheelow. They gave us a couple little glasses too. So uh, go hit them up on Canisius Lake uh, and we'll see how their Finger Lakes, this is called the Finger Lakes IPA. So we'll see how this one is. <laughs> Somebody's yelling uh, in the background. China chases his dog. Ladies first. There we go. Oh, thank there you. There you go. Smells very IPA. -y. Is it his dog he's looking for? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I was like, there's a kid in the bike on the back, so I hope it's a kid. He's yelling Owen. You see, I said ladies first is really because I wanted the bigger cup. Yeah, I know. It was, it was smooth <laughs> move. I, I know. Well played. Mm. All right. That's pretty good. Oh, a little Park Ave. Yeah, that was from the yeah. Dirty Bike series. That's what Park Ave put on for uh, the last of that series. Oh, that's so. nice. Yeah, those are yeah. nice cups. Very nice. Well, All right, well, cheers. cheers. Yeah. yeah, cheers. So, yeah, today uh, I, I raced a fat bike class. Uh, we were in the same field. I raced open women, which open does women. the same as the fat bike in yeah. the sport. Uh, how'd you finish? You know? I won. You won. Yeah, naturally. You I didn't see won. her? Yeah. yeah. yeah I, did she see left her. I did see her. <laughs> and I have it on camera. This is going to be great footage, I think. I think. <laughs> she blew past me and I tried to follow her to a really technical part <laughs> and I was all over the place. Pedals, feet came out of the pedals. <laughs> I slammed into a tree. Oh, you were GoProing? Yeah, I was GoProing it. So we'll splice that in. It'll be really good. You'll see Alexa just totally dropping hardcore. It was, it was, it was awesome. It was good. Um, I think your tire pressure mattered a little bit today because there's yeah. definitely some like greasy, oh. muddy sections in there. It was deep. Yeah, I saw a couple guys like wiping right out in front of me. When everybody came back with black and brown yeah. bikes from no matter what color it was and what they were riding, yeah, yeah that's a muddy ride. That's yeah. a muddy well, ride. Well, it was only a couple of sections though. Like mm. the rest of it was super dry. Two giant puddles and then the rest of it was totally reasonable. Yeah. So I was pre-riding around here and I'm like, oh, it's, it's going to be good. And then when I was watching the beginners come by and their butts were like completely brown, I couldn't figure out why they were so muddy. And then, you know, I guess, you know, I heard, oh, there's puddles. And then when I saw it, that's not a puddle, man. That's like a pond, lake. No. <laughs> Put some of that in there too. That was, that was, yeah, it was a swamp. Yeah, yeah. it did not smell good. I'm either. getting tested for malaria. After this. <laughs> that was, that was bad. But, uh, and Wheelow brought me a demo. So uh, we pumped, he pumped the tires way up before we went out, which is actually, it worked out. It was definitely the right decision because it was such a short section of mud that it wouldn't have mattered and everything else was so dry. Yeah. So I would not have wanted it any other way, but we thought it was going to be dry. Yeah. The, I mean, the whole game plan was we haven't, we haven't had rain in what a week. You know, yeah. I just had a couple of days ago, but usually it's been pretty dry for the most part. And I'm like, that's it. Tires are going to matter. We'll pump him up super hard. He'll be able to run it super fast, and then he hits mud. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell me about the bike you set me up on. All right. So, uh, right behind Alexa, actually, you can see we set him up on a Nitro Stout, uh, Growler Nitro Stout on 27.5 carbon rims uh, on a 4.0. So it's pretty much the master of all summer riding, uh, which is killer. And once you get on it, you'll realize. I mean, even this one had a Mastodon Comp fork on it, so he had suspension to race on and. Coming from the bike you had before, it just the weight wise, it's it's not even the same ballpark. I mean, no. it's disgustingly light. Like I couldn't believe how light the bike was. Yeah, um, it actually threw me for a loop on some of the the technical stuff because I'm used to just just slamming this pig of a bike into things <laughs> and it not mattering because <laughs> nothing happened. And that bike was so light that I was I was bouncing around and then I figured out like how to you know actually ride it a little bit better. By the um, way, he picked up the bike uh, 15 minutes ish yeah. before he had to race. So yep, yep, I perfect didn't ride at all. I raced it. Um, not even on his own pedals. No, that was a mistake. I should have ridden my own. <laughs> I came out of the pedals too many times. That was definitely a, an error. On so my some part. lessons learned today is yeah. uh, maybe pre-ride the course like Alexa did. <laughs> maybe whole course riding. Yeah, and then, yeah uh, your legs were too clean at pedals. the starting line. <laughs> yeah. I was oh, like, yeah. I don't think he checked that mud yeah. out. But I, the cl way that bike climbs is amazing. Yeah. Like, so like that, that just kind of off camber. Yeah, the, the like back. greasy climb. Oh my god, it just yeah. floated up it. Like, I, I actually was... I like that climb a lot. Yeah. Even when it's slippery, I think it's fun. Yeah, it was awesome. How was Eagle? You don't have Eagle on yours. What is yours right now? What does your bike have? My drivetrain. Yeah. Uh, X7. X7 is a it's a ten speed or nine speed. Ten. 
10. Yeah. So did you ever even get to the Eagle? You probably didn't on this course. Mm -hmm. Okay, never mind. Don't disregard that idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, well, unfortunately, he is super powerful, unlike me, which <laughs> I would be an Eagle half the ride trying to get through this thing. I just not used to having it. That, see, that's the difference is you probably were just geared out mm -hmm. in your own mind just switching well, gears. Yeah, and I've never ridden a one by on a mountain bike either. What's yours, two by? Mm -hmm. My, my fat bike's probably pro, probably pre growler existed. <laughs> like no joke. Like it was like a first generation. We can cut some weight off it. We'll, we'll, yeah, yeah. Yeah, by bring just, it to the shop. By we'll just, just junking it. Yeah. I'm okay with that theory too. <laughs> um, yeah. So you actually have a new announcement, right? There's another race course or race coming up. Yeah. So the, well, it's back. We want to talk about events today. Oh, events. Right? Sorry. So yeah, yeah. We've been talking like each one of these. We're talking about different parts of the bike community. So last time we did a lot about shops. This time we're talking yep. about events, which is part of the reason you know you're here is you're going to talk a little about a great My event events. coming up, yeah. and I want to talk to you about like what you think an event should look like. Okay, I put on a few events, so we talk about like how events contribute to building and making a better cycling community, right? Yeah. which is what this is sort of all about. Yeah, and, and I've been to quite a few with Growler going out to some of these big events and how they really do bring the community together. So uh, this will be kind of an interesting conversation to see the point of view of. The different sides and i'm going to give you the point of view not from a manufacturer side but from a consumer side right just the guy who average rider right. what's it like well you're also like kind of a vendor uh, yeah too, right yes. i mean if you're going and setting up as growler at the event then that's a different perspective than i have as like an organizer you have as a you know i organize a, a free event mm -hmm. you're organizing races i mean right. they're all yeah. really different and, and each one of them have really a, a very interesting clientele that you can kind of right approach but if it can be done right they really can hit them all i mean you've had conversations hardcore 24 some of the other races which mm -hmm. really could have an extra aspect to it which would bring in festivals and events and other parts right. to it. draw the like the group of kids out racing today mm -hmm. that's yes yeah, this i mean that's why we kind of chose events is this is a great one and andy from park air puts on awesome events and has for years and i've worked with him on our series and he's done this series forever and cross races and it's a very community oriented that's always been his his sort of thing with events too yeah so it's a good launching point but let's start with your event so let's talk a little bit about that one coming up um okay so i i guess i'll preface preface i don't know how to say that word <laughs> um i'm the events co-chair of grok which is the genesee regional off-road cyclists um it's the local imba chapter so we do all of the trail maintenance in like tryon park west bay dryer ocp we're adding stid hill this year um i know it's really i awesome. love some still hill, still hill. Um, yep. so we do like a lot of trail work throughout the year and we ask our members to come out and contribute and i know people see on facebook trail work days, trail crew days, join Grok, become a member. Um, and we we really want to make sure that the our members know that, that they're appreciated, that we don't just want their money and that we don't <laughs> just want their manpower, um, but we want them, like we want their personalities and right. their, their bikes and we want them to have fun. So We want their community, right? Right, there we, we want their friendship. Yeah. And so what we started doing last year is we, did a bike festival called Burning Bike at Ontario County Park. Burning Bike existed a while ago before I was involved with Grok and when we decided to bring it back I was kind of like assigned, Alexa why don't you organize Burning Bike? <laughs> oh, okay so <laughs> you volunteered. I know yeah, really that's how everything happens in my life. <laughs> um, so it was pretty small last year with some camping group rides we had this the most awesome bonfire ever um, and this year we're really trying to grow the event so that it's going to be two days instead of one day. We're going to have free camping. Um, we're going to have lots of group rides, clinics. And where were they holding that for all those who don't weren't at Burning Bike last year that really do want to come? Because it was a fun event. Growler was there. Yeah. I was there. It's at Ontario County Park. So really, um, if you've never been there, it's definitely worth the drive from Rochester. It's worth the drive from Buffalo, from Syracuse, like it is. A really spectacular place to ride and it's really not that far away no from, it's i would right say it's 90. 45 minutes from my house which is in want to Rochester. jump in buddy come on oh we got another yeah so jeff Wazdorf is going to join us here um 
And look at that. Oh, another <laughs> Magically, cup. another mug comes up. If you want to jump in and just so, jump uh, over the. What are the what, for the what are some of the uh, first of all the dates? Let's talk about dates. So, so it's <laughs> it's August tenth and eleventh, and luckily I know that because I people have been asking <laughs> me and I, I have that. to look it up. Well, you are the organizer. So I know. You I really know should know that. So it's a Saturday to Sunday, and we're you know starts at around noon on oh, Saturday. Thank you, sir. And uh, we are still working on the schedule. So we're going to have some group rides. We're going to do some single track academy is going to do some clinics. Um, not totally sure. Uh, Growler is going to be there. We'll be there as well. Yep. Um, um, like we did last year. And honestly, it was it was great. It was very beneficial for us. So for any of the other bike shops that are out there, we hope that they can all join us. Yeah, we really we really want like if you are a bike shop owner, come set up a table at Burning Bike and bring your bring your demo bikes if you have them. I mean, we we want everybody in the community. It's not like oh, we only want this one shop. It's we want everybody. And and for what the event was last year, kind of adding into the growler side of this part, it was for the for the bike shops going out there. It was incredibly beneficial for us to go up. We actually, and it took a while to see some of the results, but we just had one of our, our um, new Growler family members join us, and uh, Kim, he came and him and his buddies were just happy to be out there riding that weekend, and they saw us, they sat down. Yeah. They oh yeah, he's, he's got that awesome painted Growler, yeah. the, purple, the Purple Haze. Purple Haze, yeah. 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 I was racing that. on the last yeah. one. So yeah. he actually, that's where we met him. He didn't know anything about yeah. us until they went to Burning Bike, and he sat down with me and and uh, Metsy and Potsy, the other owners of Growling, we just hung out, and that is what Burning oh, yeah. Bike's about. I mean, at least that's what I yeah. I, I mean, we it. just want to make connections and and try to give back, and you know, give bring the cyclists together for rides and and something that they can just enjoy and camp and have beers and. That, that's that's all I want. There was there it. was like giveaways and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we did. We I got some raffle prizes. So if you want to donate a raffle prize, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> we well, had a and, really awesome tent donated by REI that people were like fighting over. So <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, and you know, and there's not a ton of weekend mountain bike stuff in right. Western New York. So we've got a, several series like this have popped up. Weeknight right. series. Yeah, we have, have weeknight really good. series, but um, we don't have any weekend races. We don't have anything. No festivals. Yeah, there's very little around. So, you know, the S6 that Andy used to put on was right. one that was kind of a, a, a key staple. Yeah, the hardcore. The six hour? Yeah, that was a six hour one. That's there is not a hardcore 24. This year, I don't yes, that is. one has it. Yes. The yeah, S6? Six? No, that's what I said. Say hardcore. Yeah, hardcore, hardcore is. is. Yeah. Hardcore is because you're yeah. doing hardcore with Growler, right? Working yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. Working on it. Yeah. I got but, uh, one. Need a couple more people. Yeah. I like, so when, sorry to jump off that subject, but and we said we, were, we weren't going to do this, but we're going to do it anyways. Hardcore 24 is awesome. Even if you are not a crazy, crazy racer, I am, that was one of my favorite races ever to go to. It's 24 hours of racing. Kind of, it's actually the same exact place that we're going to be having the burning bike. Go join us. It is yeah. awesome. And we just have a fun festival, but it's only one day, right. which is what I kind of like what yeah. you guys are starting to do. Yeah. And unofficially, but we're going to announce it unofficially here because we still got to wait on a few more permits. But we're looking to add a race to Burning Bike that we'll be putting on. Woo! The same people that do dirty bikes and all of those things, the Rock Crit. So I didn't our, even know that. Yeah, our organization is going to work with Grok. Yeah. Um, so we have all everything kind of set up. We're just waiting for the final approvals from the park. Yeah. And Sunday we'll have a race component that adds into the festival. So nice. Uh, Saturday will be rides and racing on Sunday. There'll still yeah. be rides on Sunday. So we'll try to add as many sort of events and bring as many of the community in. And I'm excited because I've never put on a mountain bike race before. Yeah. Go! So, and because right. I'm a mountain bike racer and I like to casually mountain bike, I want everybody that I know mm -hmm. at this event in one. And she's going to design the course for me. So. Yeah. Well, and I that's in rely on her. And right? that's an awesome place to ride. So if, any, if you've oh, never yeah, been out to like, Ontario County yeah. Parks, thanks to Grok and some of the other the groups that are out there, that is a killer place. Like the trail selection you can choose for a park or for a race, yeah. it is phenomenal. I mean. I, you got me all excited. Yeah. It's fun riding. Uh, it's awesome riding. And it's yep. there's areas that are, it's kind of, it's a little bit more technical than drier, but not in every area. It's, yeah, there's there's everything from beginner to, yeah. I would say, not super advanced. Like, you're not going to be, like, hucking off huge drops no, no, or anything. No, no. But if you're a beginner, you can very easily go and ride. Especially the top areas. Yep. Um, it's that one black trail that drops yeah. down and it gets a little bit of a, yep. a nasty climb up. But for the race, they bypassed it for the 24. So Yeah, they don't, they don't do it for the 24 because yeah. there's an overlap section where yep. you can't We're looking Theoretically, we're looking to include that for the, for the expert in the sport and oh. then keep that out of the beginner. So the beginners and the kids can race the uh, the easier stuff up top, and the experts in the sports can race something a little harder. 
but of course it'll be a little shorter than a 24 hour so Oof. a little different kind of racing so you know yeah that's a big month if we're yeah. gonna get into the black trail that's gonna be yeah. awesome so we'll see we're still that's working out yeah, we're, the we're hashing but, out the the race yeah. course yeah but um, it'll be fun so yeah that's a great place yeah awesome so you can do that on day two yeah day two yeah so, so what's going on day one so day one think? is going to be um group rides clinics um lots of kid oriented stuff so Grok has this little rippers group that's um, happens on Dryer at Dryer Road on two, maybe Tuesday night, and it's a bunch of parents riding with their kids, and it's super cool. There's like 30 or 40 of them. You know, if you ever run into them at Dryer, it's amazing because these kids are just—they're so awesome. What are the age groups for those kids, so that if there's anybody out there that wants um, to bring their kid out, they can have? I mean, this I don't know if there's really a minimum age group. It's mostly like, are they able to pedal their bike in Dryer? Because Dryer can be a kind of hilly. But I know there's kids at eight, eight-ish, <laughs> and all the way up. I know there's some kids that are older, like early teens, that are kind of. You know, they're they're in limbo right now because they're a little too old for the little rippers. They're kind of like medium rippers. <laughs> um, so I'm I sure think, that's what they want to uh, call, that's what we call yeah. I think <laughs> that, that in the as summer goes along we might have someone coming in to kind of take the medium rippers and, and do like a bigger ride with them. So they're gonna have last year we did a lot of games and, and stuff with the kids mm -hmm. and the little rippers group kinda spearheaded that. I handed that off. Do we have a Nike team here? Sorry to try no, to jump I don't off. think we do. Maybe that would be a good idea to, to try to intermingle with these the group with taking Grok and do an event with just this intermediate group of that junior high high school group. Maybe Growler can jump in. Yeah, See, cool. look at that. That's actually not a. Yeah, there's some Nike teams popping up, I think, in Syracuse-ish area yes. and stuff. We but we don't have anything locally. Because there. I know most of the races are that way. Most of the events are I right. That way. Everything that out. way. No one knows what that way means. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think Syracuse is yeah. right there. Towards New York City. <laughs> yeah, towards New York City is where yeah. uh, Rob Baker, one of the Growler guys, um, he's big. He has his own team and uh, he does a tremendous job with with getting all these kids together. But you know, it kind of goes beyond just just the writing. It's it's giving these kids something to do and going to events and being together. It's awesome. Yeah. So I mean, I was an athlete in high school and I think it's the best thing I, for kids. I mean, especially, you know, as adults, you know, activity is declining. I think it's really important to start activity early and get it ingrained. But you know, what's even interesting. So for all those who don't, didn't get a chance to start at a young age, Jeff, how old, how old were you when you ride your first bike? Like not your first bike, but when you actually started getting back into mountain biking. <laughs> I started this two years ago. Yeah, and, and I won't ask your age because I see you're avoiding Old. that one. So at least 23. <laughs> Old. So, so, so Jeff actually came to us, and this is kind of going to that thing. If you've never been out there, come join us. Right. Grab a bike. Go to the burning bike. Meet yeah. some of the other locals. We have, we'll have beginner rides like that are going to take it real easy. Go on easy trails. Yeah, we, we yeah. want everyone. And, and I know that personally, we run a ladies ride on Monday nights at 6 p.m. and it is a no drop ride so if you have never even been on a mountain bike you can come to our ride well, and, and we that, will not we will not leave you in the woods and that brings us to like what's important about events and what really needs to happen with events and you know I do a lot of road <laughs> events and, and things like that and you can see particularly in the road I'm not sure it's happening here as much and you, you would know much better than I do um, in the mountain bike scene but the road scene in particular is just it's really down you know, every event I've been to this year every race I've been to the numbers are low hmm. um, and it's it's not it's sad it's it's it's, it's unfortunate to see uh, but it's because we're not bringing new people into the sport yeah. right yeah. mountain biking cycle cross does a pretty good job of it in a lot of cases I think mountain biking mm -hmm. does but it's like how do we create events that bring people in who don't who are not riding or racing and they're in, and they get involved yeah and one of the things that so a few years ago there was the Western York bike fest and I actually thought it was a good event and I thought it was a great event yeah, we set and up something there. happened I don't yeah. know what happened to the, it the organizer decided that she couldn't do it anymore okay and so that's actually that's, that's kind of, of that's kind of what burning what happened is Western York bike fest went away and we kind of saw that and went well maybe we could do something to replace it and it's it's a little different because Western York bike fest had road rides and, and and honestly I don't the organizer Cindy I don't know how she did it because she yeah, got demo trucks like I have been trying to get demo trucks to burning bike and I can't get anyone so except well, think, for Growler. Well, so why don't we 
a lot of demo trucks are, are not there. Yeah, anymore. demo trucks are phasing out. out. They really That's are. Part of it, yeah. They have one East yeah. Coast truck, and you know the East Coast truck is going to Nemba Fest and Dirt Fest, and they're not sticking coming, to the big events. They're not coming to Little Burn. Well, which is which is this is where it comes back into we talk about community, right? So how do you get more involvement? Which is what we're talking about. How do we get more involvement? In, and this is where it does take the local bike shop. We talked about it last week or last uh, episode, which is the heart of the of the industry is the bike shop and without the bike shop driving people to these events right. or saying hey look i got a whole fleet of bikes the problem is the bike shops don't have a fleet of bikes right. and that's where you need companies like mine who do have fleets of bikes right. that can just be ridden till they die right and we bring them out to these events and um this is you know maybe a maybe i can reach out to some of these bike shops and say hey let's get your vendors out here and right. and let's start doing it. because once again going back to the heart of the problem or where we really need to do have a better job of doing is getting new cyclists in jeff being a prime example when he joined two years ago literally i remember talking to him about it never been on a bike or not never been, but never been on especially an expensive bike and now he's pretty much the crackhead of bicycling <laughs> <laughs> he's at everything oh yeah, dude he's, he's i mean right. yeah, i can't believe you've only been around for two years i feel like that's it yeah. yeah, just started yeah. to. Well, it's like kids, like being a kid again. Yeah, yeah. Just running in the woods. Yeah. Oh, this is just great. Right. You it, know? It, but you don't get to experience those things unless so someone's what, there. What, what was the What was the catalyst for you two years ago when you were not involved in it at all? Uh, someone introduced me to it locally. I didn't know we had all these trails. Mm -hmm. uh, Honestly, if I knew these trails were here, I would have been on my old little Jameis cruddy bike. <laughs> you know, just trying to barrel through these woods a long time ago, but I didn't know they were here. And as soon as he introduced me to that, I said, oh, man, this is just great. I'm a kid again. And and that's what it is. And you went fat. You went straight fat. I, I went 27.5. Oh, you and did. Then, it, then I switched to fats, and then I could just go all year round. Yeah. And now you haven't went mm -hmm. back on your 27.5. No, I've just been bigger fats. <laughs> <laughs> just getting fatter. Been bigger fats. Just getting fatter. Bigger and lighter, right? Yeah. Bigger and super light. Yeah. Ultra light. Yeah, yours is ridiculous. Super light. But Would anybody like some more, by the way? I'll take a little it's, more. It's the best. Yeah, I, like I didn't it. realize I didn't all these really trails, like IPAs, you know, right and around quite you have Bay where. Park West. Right. You have Tryon. I didn't want to go through yeah. there. And then yeah. there's other trails right around that, you know, you can kind of poke your nose into. So people like you not to. Yeah, people, we have some great There's a ton of trails here. that are right here yeah. that people really don't know about. Yeah, I mean, I can ride to two trail systems from my house. That's and I live in, like, basically, I live in East Irondequoit, basically the city. Correct. I mean, it, probably I must live near you if you can Correct. drive. So, I, well, so I, I, yeah. I, you got you have Duran, then you have yeah. Zoo, then you have, you know, Bay Park. Some of those may or Tryon. may not be official. Yeah. They're not, they're not <laughs> As we say that out loud. Grok condones riding in Tryon and West Bay. Yeah, you're going to you know? get us in trouble with Grok. <laughs> uh, they're not going to let me put the race on. <laughs> no. Uh, well, some of them are not, they're, they're tough to even walk in. You get into some of these Lucian parks, I mean, they're just, just tricky just to walk through, yeah. right. more or less ride through. But they're really old school trails back there, been there for 30, 40 years. But this is where Burning Bike and, and some of the other events that are out there become super important to the community is because it gives you an opportunity to meet people that are just like you. You know, the, the maybe you haven't been on the trail as much as, as, as others have been riding. Like I've been riding 13 years, I think now, somewhere around there. And now I don't really need anybody to go ride. I just go ride. But what I enjoy the most about riding is riding with my buddies. Mm -hmm. I met them by fluke. Yeah. But for most people, that's not the case. They have events like races. They have right. burning bike. Uh, the dirty bike or dirty bike series. I ain't the dirty bike series. There you go. You're right. Dirty. You're I dirty. did say yeah, it right. All right. Dirty, dirty bike, bike series. Dirty right. bike series. <laughs> it's the you and the dirty that throws me off every time. It's right. a big community. It's so, a, it's, so it's awesome community dirty. of people. Yeah. You see different people at different events. It's it's it is a small community, but it's yeah. it's great that we can get more people involved. Right, which is always the problem because these events in general, you know, putting on so many events for the last several years and road and everything else, is it's is it just it's it's having enough people to make it happen. Yeah, it's well, getting, you know, and getting volunteers. Yeah, volunteers, it was a nightmare. and it, you know, it depends. Every event has its own sort of challenges. You know, if you're doing a mountain bike race, you don't have to worry about traffic. Uh, but you got to worry about permits and, right. and things like that. You know, if you were doing a road race, you got to worry about traffic control. You got to always kind of, no matter what it is, but you know, you go through all of the organization and all of those components of it. And if you're not getting a good turnout and you're losing money, you can't do it. Right? Well, and this is the kind of the interesting part to it because this is a free event. Right. Correct. I, I'm glad yeah. I said that right. So yep. you'd no, be mad at me if it wasn't no, free. No, it's free. It's free. In, in that just just thinking about this if, if you guys are out there and you have time please volunteer to grok grok does so much for us here in, in in central new york but 
Or are we central or western? I say western. I grew up in Florida, so I'm, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> everything's north to me. Yeah, we're, yeah, not, yeah. we're not in central New York. You're one of those guys right. that says we're western upstate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're in upstate. No, yeah, we are yeah, western. No, no, no. Not a thing. That's not a real region. <laughs> western New York. <laughs> like, people think anything north of the Catskills is just upstate. Like, there's a whole oh. lot of stuff. Yeah. Listen, when I moved up here, I had to figure out where Rochester was. Yeah, yeah. Or actually, it was Syracuse. And I'm like, the hell is Syracuse? This is well. That is Central New York. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, but I didn't realize they even existed. I thought New York was that little city, and that was all you had. Yeah. yeah. So when I was, I was like, what the hell? So. Expand your mind. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, I grew up in Florida too. education. There's only so much I can do. No offense <laughs> to anybody that lives in Florida, uh, but I did. So, um, yeah. So, but, but that that brings up another problem. So I've been to a ton of events, and the biggest events are actually paid events, right? Because of the issues with volunteers right. and not having enough resources to help. Like, Alexa, I don't know how you're going to pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the nervous laugh totally coming right out of crazy. Yeah. No, I mean, last year I pretty much organized Burning Bike completely by myself. And, and then, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I asked all of my friends to help me. So I was like selling raffle tickets and announcing things and <laughs> like it, it was it was maniacal it's a lot, right? and it's a so lot. this year I'm doing a little bit better trying to delegate um mm -hmm. but yeah I mean I'm basically like tapping people right help me help because when we put out like hey we need volunteers it's just crickets it's great so yeah. yeah everybody loves to use the swimming pool right. they don't want to clean it right so and it's that's kinda... where really as a yeah. event organizer particularly racing so racing is always a paid event just because you yeah. can't even begin to do that as a free event right. but like I, there's people who I, I guess there's always this weird thing of like when you put on races well what are you raising money for it's kind of like nothing. Nothing. You're like, just no, trying to barely freaking break race. Right. And, and, right. Like, and part of that, which is which is the the difficult side to it, is everybody does want to have some sort of charity they're supporting in this right. in this industry. And I and and it's it's difficult because the reality is is you have to make some money right. to be able to do this. Otherwise, we can't yeah. do it yes. as a as a business for bikes or yes. or and we or, need to find more ways to make it yes. profitable for everybody who's involved well also the people who are paying for the event are getting something for their right. money it's not it's not a you know donation but yeah. like the more people who are making money and the more economy that's involved just more. in the whole thing the better that it's going to be yep. you know you don't go to a, a football game in an NFL game and, and not pay you don't go to dinner and not pay you don't go to <laughs> Darien Lake and not pay right you know what I mean like all of your recreation is around an economy yeah and cycling should be the same way yeah, my but cycling is, is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well i was gonna say the amount yeah. of money that yeah. i've spent right. yeah. a lot of times yeah. it's sort of like people get standoffish about it yeah. it's like there's nothing wrong with that like right. the people who are doing this yeah. should get paid for what they're doing with volunteers that's always a it's huge hard. issue yeah. yeah especially when we're putting on races where they're on the road right so right. i need i need people out on the road right you need marshals standing yeah. out there in the hot sun and i don't want to ask for by, you know, for a ton of volunteers right. to come out and do that, and I don't want my racers from my race team to have to not race to do right. that. So I always pay an organization. I find a fire call or a, oh, that's awesome, reason, and I always pay them money to come out and do it. Yeah. Right? I gotta have the money to do it, and I gotta put it up as part of my budget. But then they come out, they make some money. Right. They're working with the community, yeah. so it helps with the community, yeah. right? And it makes those things work. And yeah. we need to, it, but people get really sort of touchy about like who's making money and promoters yeah. making money and, and it sort of depends on the discipline. I don't think any race, race promoters yeah. are not. By the way, we're not making a lot of money. It wouldn't yeah. be a horrible thing if people were. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. Well, like because you should would be. have more. Right. And, and, and create more opportunity. And I think we saw this quite a bit this year. Like I, even owning my own manufacturing company, I didn't realize how many races we actually had here this year. Now, I don't know if they're all just now popping up and now because of Jeff, he's always hanging out with us at the shop that I'm, he's asking me, Hey, you racing this weekend? And I'm always telling him no. Um, but, um, I, I don't know if that's the case, but the reality is there's a lot more being popped up, but nothing's free. Sure. So, you know, it's, it's okay. It's I mean, okay. I understand, I understand you have to pay. I mean, yeah. they're, the organizers are putting it on, they have to pay for it. They got to pay for the people. Yeah. To I mean, stand and... Arrowhead, I think they donate their proceeds back. And some people do. And yeah. that's great. There's nothing right, wrong right, with right. people who want to do that. I'm all for that. If, but if they also put on a pretty, like, it's just you know the august family is timing the event you know very right. minimal there's very no minimal. road marshals so they're able right. to take the profits and donate it back and, that's great. and, and if something goes wrong no one's upset right right and there's nothing wrong with that model but right. everything shouldn't have to fall into right no i totally and you agree you can't always do that you know what I mean? in terms right. of because like you said like volunteers one thing and somebody told me i won't say who it is but i had a, a prominent shop owner in rochester who gave me some really good advice years ago before i put on my first race you know, and he said, like, the first year or two, you'll get a ton of people who are, like, really right. eager. Super and then excited. after a year, two years, then it's like, 
crickets, you know? So like, you really have to incentivize those people. Instead of begging them, hey, will you come out? It's, hey, I'm gonna pay you. Like, just like anything else, I'm gonna pay you. Maybe they're not gonna make a ton of money, but I'm gonna pay them something to To show. show Yeah, Yeah. and I always try to do that with my my crew and the, you know, volunteers that we have and people working reg and everything that we do. (laughs) We try to incentivize them to some extent because they deserve it. They're working really hard. Of course. Like, they deserve something out of it. How many hours are you gonna put in? I mean, realistically, hundreds of 100. So many hours. I mean, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of hours of just her volunteer time, yeah. not including everyone else that gets involved. All the other people in. that are going to help me yeah. come that weekend. Yeah, because yeah. it's not it's not the the, the, yeah. the most interesting. So I've been to Nimba Fest and Dirt Fest. I've been to both of them, and those are some huge events when you go to them. It takes you know a week to set up for right. that event just so that I can come there and right. you know drink beer and listen to music and, and right. forget marketing. Oh, you know I mean? yeah. like and that, that's even more competitive. That just every year that grows. Yeah. I mean, dirty bikes. I start six months out easy. Yeah, I mean, and Constantly. we're we're bad at that. Like, Constantly. I'm the yeah. first one to admit that I'm like, oh, did we make a Facebook event? Yeah. Like, we got to do that <laughs> oh because I'm the I'm the only one person, and like I work full time and I train and race, and I'm also trying to do this on the side so you so know. for all you out there who need to vo- <laughs> we need some volunteers to help out with this year's <laughs> event it's- you know it is it is crazy like there i just did a 24-hour race over the weekend Solstice. and people they have volunteers at night how do they get those people like there was a because our campsite was They're right by paid. a road crossing and there's people out there one guy you know telling you know stopping cars and stuff and all night long and I, they probably are paid because who would do that big, it's, it's one of the biggest events in North America. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's 3,000 races. It's, so it's they're, huge. They're, I'm sure they an, have a budget there. So they have enough money coming in right. that they can turn around and then pay yeah. people right. to then, you know, manage. But that's the key. So we go back into the right. other part. How do we draw more people to these events? You guys start, you, you guys start way early. So, yeah. so I'll say this. One of the things about Western New York Bike Fest that I found interesting was they were charging the vendors to show up. Right. And that might have been part of the some of the breakdown of, of the event in general. But... Hmm. I easily made that money. I remember the first time I went, it was two years in running. The first time I went was with the very first growler I ever had, <laughs> set up next to Niner with 30 bikes. Right. And I remember sitting there going, what did I get myself into? Oh, I'm no. like, I remember calling my brother on the phone, I'm like, uh, I'm out of my league. Yeah. But it, it was the, the, the jump start for my company. Right. And that was the day I sold the very first growler ever, like at that event. So mm-hmm. it's events like this that really should be helping these local vendors boost the boost their their part the other thing is is getting non-industry companies who people would be interested in involved which is what our we've always done with sponsorship for for our events with once again nut butter by the way that's gonna go with uh, that i have like 20 of those jars (laughs) but they're delicious and i That's not right. I don't, we don't know. You didn't hear that hopefully in that conversation there, but uh, yeah. I'm glad that she's the one who said that. <laughs> like, like, like if didn't, we're gonna make offensive comments, line, it's no. good that the female is the one who's making offensive uh, comments. Uh, so, I would never right, do so that. So as we kind of wrap up here today, the sun's going down. We're gonna run out of light. We're gonna run out of space. Uh, let's go through. I want to know number one thing that makes a good event from everybody here. Oh boy! So what is like for you as a rider, as somebody who's going to show up, whether it's a race, a festival, I don't care what it is, but like what is the number one thing you want to see? We'll start with you. So for me in particular, my favorite thing about all the festivals I've been to is the ability to hang out with everybody that's there and socialize. It's always a social aspect. Really doesn't have anything to do with the bikes. It sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> my favorite part what do you think Number um thing. so i i would tend to agree with that but i also i want to go somewhere <clears throat> where the trails are just amazing <clears throat> and so and marked so like i went to the shindig and shindig a couple years ago and they had maps at every intersection and i thought that was amazing because the last thing that i want to do is get my phone out and look at trail forks and try to figure out where i am I just want to look at that map on the tree with a little X on it and be like, I can just take this trail. And that levels it up for me personally. I've been to very big festivals and yeah. she's 100% right. Yeah. We've been lost and not realizing where we were. And that's no fun when no, you're yeah. out at a festival. It's awful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just, so I think I should probably take a page out of that for, but you know, <laughs> I'm not that organized. Idea. So I guess we'll see if I'm the one trudging down the black trail to put a 
laminated trail map on the on before a Before you enter, it's going to be 30 minutes. <laughs> Don't go down here. Don't You're go down there. You're not going to go back up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? What do you think? Number one thing. I like it when people that put on the events have riders that are familiar with the site. So you have your, you know, like an expert medium, beginner riders, and they'll take groups out because then we can explore. Because, like I said, if, if the trails are not marked well, you just kind of banging through trails the anxiety of where am i am i lost am i get, can i turn around yet i like that someone's you know we get a big group ride you know you get a good uh you know expert or medium rider and we can get a, a number of people together just rip through the trails that's fun because with shenanigans we could just rip through them and i don't have to be at all concerned about where i am i just ride i don't have to think where i am <laughs> i don't think where i gotta turn around i just ride and it's just fun and that's and then there's different levels of people so someone wants to go a little slower they take someone out beginner that's nice because then i don't have to think about where i am because i just want to ride right yeah i don't have to worry about where i am just you know, it's, it's nice about the local trails i don't think about it what's yours cool um i'm always at races so i want to see i want to see really like hard racing and then a lot of really like drinking beer afterwards. Like it has well, to be the free balance. beer. I was yeah. gonna add another number one reason why yeah. you need to have it. I really do think no BS. You should join us. Yeah. Um, but it, it really needs to have that drinking beer. Yeah, I love the drinking and the socializing and hanging out afterward. But I also love the respect for like let's go out and race no matter how fast you are, no matter what level you're yeah. at. Like there's a respect for that part of the game and that that's really cool and doesn't necessarily mean you got to be on the podium but that you're racing and you're racing hard and you're you're in that competition can i add one more to this sorry to keep adding number one <laughs> i got three number one three <laughs> so going to dirt fest versus going to dirt fest um uh you want to race town race or? town yeah. versus going to nimba fest nimba fest was much more friendly family friendly like hmm. I would never take my kids to race town, but I would love to bring my whole family over to, to Nimba Fest. That is a super important thing, and which which is what Burning Bike was last yeah. year for me. I would love, actually, I think my wife and kids did show up at that one just to hang out for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, we want your wives and kids, yeah. you know, for dudes that ride bikes. Bring yeah. your wives, bring your kids, like, hang out. And my women who ride bikes, yeah. bring your, bring your yeah. husband. Yeah, we have a, we have a ladies' <laughs> right. ride, that's so, right. you know, yeah. well, ladies that's what can you ride, too. Right. And that's, that's what we want. That's that's the yeah. whole idea of this. idea so of that, growing the demographics, yeah. right? Yeah, it, it bring the family, and when we when we talk about for all those that are going to be going to Burning Bike, there is going to be a family-oriented aspect to this. I know there is, because I was there last year, and I loved it. Yeah. And it's, my family went, and and I, I'm assuming that's going to happen again this year. So sorry to add another number one to it, but that was it. <laughs> All that's right. That's it. Family, family oriented. So. All right. Well, that's it for Growlers with Lilo number two. There it Woo! is, baby. Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right. We'll see you next time. See you. All right. Cool. All right. Cool. See you.